Bien, eh, una vez terminado. So, we've finished the panel discussion. I'd like to thank all the, the speakers for sticking to time and for their presentations. So we'll now take questions from the floor. I've got a couple of written ones. One that we got before for Francesc. It's a little bit late, the question, but not to worry. We got a tweet asking, uh, see if I can find it. Have you found any management similarity between the best recycling municipalities in Catalonia? The districts that recycle the most or have the highest rates, one thing they share is a political vision that ends up consolidating in a change of model, i.e. they move towards door-to-door -to -door collection accompanied by a major awareness campaign. And that's it, basically. The, from the results we can see, you can understand that some of districts, such as the Tiras del Ebro, are furthest forward in this, and basically because they've opted for an effective system, i.e. door-to-door collection, and they take this step, you can see that when they really have a, a will and they build a political consensus to take these steps. Muchas gracias. También tenemos... Thank you. Another question for Fundación Canarias, Carlota. Don't you think we need to put an end to confusion that people have with regards to what they're recycling and where? Especially with organic waste, yes. <laughs> there are many people. Alexis, you for example? The interpreter cannot hear the question from the floor. Many people talk about the... Uh, containers, the reject container, but basically not people actually have a clue. Therefore, we need awareness rates and we need education. Above all, when we're going to introduce a new container, which will be the bio-waste uh, container, which is key for the future of recycling in Canary, Canary, Canary Islands, so that we can hit our targets, our EU targets. Therefore, we'll have to make a huge effort to educate people when we have the bio-waste container in La, in La Palma, with their island council, we've been working on educating people about bio waste because people don't really understand the organic fraction when they are recycling. This is key. We have another question over Twitter from the Twitter stream, also for Carlota. Do you have strategies for driving green jobs? In the Canary Island wide for promoting green jobs, to tell you the truth, if there is, I haven't heard about it. It's not me who should be taking this question. I really don't know. I don't know. In any event, this is a question for all of you in general. Talking about collecting waste, do you think the Japanese model, i.e. collecting different materials on different Day. Is this something that we could roll out here in Spain or in Europe? I don't know if there are any other model. Any of the speakers, if you'd like to come in this. Ignacio. Don't know if we'd be able to make this widespread in Spain. But when we talk about door to door collection, that's basically what we're talking about. One day we collect one fraction, another day we collect another fraction. I didn't know this was a Japanese model. but. Mm, in Spain, um, 200 different municipalities uh, who work using this particular model. And in fact, they are doing it very efficiently and very effectively. Thank you. Japanese model. There we go. <laughs> okay, more. Uh, talking about the chair, university chair. Uh, when it's raising, can this help? Uh, if we have a sponsoring uh, patronage, can this help in the long term? I think I mentioned this on one of my slides. Yes. 
the, re the daily relations with industry, with the sponsorship of this activity and this whole range of activities that I described, then this is gradually taking root in society. And there's a multiplier effect, and that's the students. They are the first ones who will go home and start talking about this thing. They'll talk to their friends and family. We've even seen cases of students who studied the waste as a subject, and amongst their friends say, well, what are you studying? Well, I'm studying this. And they say, what, you're studying rubbish? But in the end, these are waste freaks waste nerds, uh, but they spread their attitudes amongst their friends and even in their own families, and I think this is family, and that's the work that we're really doing. Oh. Okay, we spoke about the Japanese model, door-to-door. -door. In Tenerife, what we're doing is we're changing the paradigm. But obviously, I have to take care because and sometimes you have to think neighborhoods, municipality, we're going to try to change things, ways things are done, and this town or this neighborhood might just export this type or this fraction to the, uh, the neighboring community, because basically that's how they end up doing things. So we have to uh, create some kind of automatic uh, process um, to make things work better. And with regards to uh, green jobs, um, Mm, I don't have a clear answer, but Law 21-2011 gives clear guidelines to the councils whereby they can manage their own resources and they can look at waste and select the best equipped agents to deal with this waste. So I think that certainly we can offer jobs through waste management done properly. Mm. One final question. We've heard all the speakers and I've thought about many different things. We've heard about the German model as a source of inspiration, uh, the Catalan district. Benoit spoke about the region of Ile-de-France and Paris. It was very complex. But perhaps a question addressed to all of you. What about a region like ours, an island? which has 50% of the region is protected. Mm, so waste collection is a massive challenge for us. So the, how can we compare our situation to Germany or to Catalonia? Can you give us any answers here? Does anybody want to answer that? Anybody? Okay. I'm not going to just answer this because this is the million dollar question. It would require us to think in detail, but I would like to make a comment for your security. I wasn't here yesterday. Maybe you did, did tackle it yesterday, but we have, I haven't heard about it today, and that is the weight of, the, of tourism. From what I understand, tourism is not as seasonal as it is in the Balearic Islands, where it's even more of a problem because all the facilities have to be oversized. But tourism makes things more complicated for managing the waste. But on the other hand, we need to bear in mind where is the waste generated? Because the waste produced by the tourism, how does it get into the waste management system? Normally, it will be as commercial waste from hotels, from restaurants, from bars. Something in the, there'll be daily cleaning of the streets as, and the dustbins as well, which leads me to think I'm pretty sure, without seeing the numbers, the commercial uh, waste will be far higher than the national average. So I would have thought that the strategy for uh, tackling this would be to centralize it. We have seen, because of the higher concentration of of waste, because obviously a, a commercial waste is going to generate far more than a household. So you can consider highly efficient strategies in order to pick up this waste. So without answering your question specifically, I think in this area requires a specific focus. I don't think I could give a specific answer. Mm, we have just begun on an initiative together with the community of Madrid and Castilla and Leon uh, 
in the Guadarrama region. And precisely we're studying waste collection in the national park, this is Guadarrama. Obviously we're right next to a huge conurbation, this is uh, Madrid, with only 40 kilometers away. So we have worked with Ecoembes on an initiative to study protected natural areas. This is uh, the area next to Madrid and how we can better manage waste. Mm, uh, there is a problem and we are studying it right now. And I think that if we're talking about the islands as if they were independent islands without any kind of connection, Obviously, we're talking about Tenerife, but I think we need to move forward, especially towards a model that can resolve the waste problem here in the Canaries as a whole. And to do this, we have to reduce the, um, the extra costs of the island factors, because the transport costs between islands and between the islands and the mainland are very, very high. So it means that the industries here in the islands cannot compete with those uh, or the costs. They, they don't reach the critical mass that they would on the mainland. It's not just the mainland. We needed this on an island level, but the islands as a whole face common problems because in the end, the characteristics are very similar. So we need to look for joint systems that can resolve the problem of waste in Canaries as a whole. <coughs> um that you've got very specific context yet I think there's lots of we we collected lots of good practices across Europe and some might not apply to you but we know that there are some instruments that are very effective and that you could investigate um, the, the thing is uh, there's not one single instrument that will solve all your problem it's more the the most advanced territories, they have got a mix of consistent instruments. Um, I think uh, one, the, the most advanced territories, they always, all, all of them started with making, uh, putting landfill taxes, like making lo landfilling more expensive. Like when they, the people, there are some people from Styria in, in, in Austria that told us, if, if it's not the case, why are you bothering doing anything? Because at the end of the day, people won't care about that. There's also um, all the about communication, and it's not only just making nice pictures, but also ensuring that your sorting guidelines are consistent, that it does not change from one place to another. Because we did that in France, and it's a mess. Nobody knows what to put in the bin. You're making 20 meters, you're entering another commune. It's not the same system, and people get lost. And the first step, anyway, also is to explain what they're supposed to do to the people, having something very concrete. And that's, you do that both by doing very general communication, but also going to talk to people. At the end of the day, direct communication will change because then you can interact and people will really get what you want. So I guess there's already lots of good practices, documented good practices that you can find inspiration and then you probably have to adapt. But <laughs> That's it. Tenían traducción, ¿no? Si el traductor es... ¿No los han usado? Sí. Ok. Sí. No, no, no. Estoy sentado todo el día. Llevo dos días sentado. No. I've been sitting down for two days. Basically... The feature of being an island, the island factor, is an especially important factor in that as it's an island, its self-sufficiency has to be even more important in our move towards a circular economy. I think if there's one message I would like to pass on to the Canary Islands from my experience, it would be to set up two parts, which is collection and treatment, and get them in, in sync. Selective sorting of paper and glass is not very complicated at all. You put out a container or a door-to-door -door system, you start collecting this fraction, 
and if you have an industry that can recycle the paper or the glass, you can do this very quickly in a couple of weeks, a couple of months. But a waste strategy that has to be fundamental because it's the most important part, that's not so easy. We, it, it took us a lot of time to deploy the strategy because in order to do the sorting, you have to have the plants that are ready to receive these bio, this bio waste to the different streams. If you don't have these installations, then it's difficult to start sorting. You can promote it, as Florian said, you can promote this management at origin. There are loads of allotments and fields here. There are a lot of houses that will have space next to it to self-manage their own waste. This is the most important part of it, but we think that there are also, in these cities where they couldn't do this, so the management system for organic waste is essential, but how can you start addressing this if you haven't set up the infrastructure first? And this is where we have to start thinking about the islands and how complex it could be to site to, to locate these um, facilities, would it be better to have one large centralized plant or a network of small ones? I believe in the latter, quite honestly, the, which are closer for transport. They're closer to the consumer of the compost. They're surrounded by farmers who, in the end, they're the ones who are going to buy the compost. I think you need to go. You need to take a slow but steady approach. We started later, and it took time. Setting up a plant, it's not so easy to decide where to locate it. Building it takes time. So, after a pilot experience, which I think is a, a pressing need, not just in Tenerife. I'm talking about on other islands too. The next step would be to be detailed planning of how you're going to address this issue, but without any, you don't want to rush into it. Thank you for all the participants, uh, Jose Vicente, Ignacio, Carlota, Carlos, uh, and Jean Benoit. Thank you to all you, and to Francesc. Thank you.